name is Ian Powell, I'm Managing Director of the Dairy Group based in Dorset. Uh, we're at um, Buscot Farm uh, meeting, uh, talking about future-proofing the, the farm business. The um, areas we focused on were particularly about mitigating uncertainty, so particularly things like uh, mitigation for weather uncertainty, milk price, which is clearly a long-going uh, uncertain issue uh, for the business, also input, input cost uh, volatility, and also uh, how we deal, how we manage cash uncertainty going forward. It's a way of taking a, an overview of the whole business in terms of how it captures energy in the, in the business, and the sort of targets which are achievable by, I suppose, progressive uh, dairy farms. So a good target is 100 gigajoules uh, of uh, energy utilised per hectare, and the calculation is one of um, energy use for milk production, which is a standard calculation. Yeah. Uh, and, and the energy use for maintenance of the, the cow and deducting the purchase fee costs, the energy supply from those. Uh, and then, depending on the stocking rate, that will establish the uh, UME gigajoules per hectare. Farms have different uh, options on how they might capture energy. So, for example, a crop of uh, maize yielding uh, 40 tonnes a hectare, that would capture around right about 150 gigajoules. And uh, cows well stocked, uh, achieving 9,000 litres, they could achieve uh, energy capture of 125 gigajoules per hectare. Uh, but the range on farms will be enormous. Uh, some you know, down in the sort of 70 gigajoules and below, uh, certainly below 100 gigajoules. Yeah, essentially, it's translating that energy into increased utilisation of homegrown forages. That translates into fee cost saving. Uh, and it also relates back to the, you know, how w well you're using the land that you're farming on. And okay. that's the part probably is often uh, forgotten about. It's just you know, how much, uh, how much, how important that is. The sure. technique which has risen in all sectors of industry, but essentially it's looking at every part of the process in producing milk, starting with the what we call the the assets in the business, which are the, the people, the uh, the land, the buildings, um, the, the herd itself, and understanding the uh, the quality of the, the assets you're dealing with. And then working through the processes in terms of uh, uh, growing, uh, harvesting crops, uh, how we actually go about milking cows, um, and then translating those into uh, detailed processes, which can then end up as, uh, as protocols, which can be communicated to staff members, so that each member of the team really knows, understands what is the uh, okay. the plan for the business going forward. Yeah, a number, number of benefits of getting those processes written, written, essentially written down. Um, key ones really are you're trying to identify where the process is, is wasteful, where there is waste existing in the business, uh, how you can streamline and improve that, that process. And part of that process is to discuss with each person involved in that particular area, it may be to do with feeding, um, so that you get their input into the process, see that uh, we agree this is the best way of doing something. Once that's essentially agreed, write it down, it becomes something which becomes a, we call a protocol. Mm -hmm. So every member of the team that's delivering a particular process, they understand their, um, their contribution to it, and they, therefore they can be measured in that particular process. Yeah, the benefits of benchmarking the business against the uh, optimal uh, dairy system KPIs, essentially it's identify strengths and weaknesses, uh, and that's really the key benefit. So what you're trying to find out is which of the areas of the business that you're weakest in, uh, where the opportunities may be, and you can actually quantify then if I can achieve um, a, a, an improvement in a particular area, that's, you can quantify that. It may often mean perhaps some investment is needed because that's why you haven't been able to achieve the, um, the result, um, but at least you then have a real measure uh, of, of where you're starting from and how essentially you get from where you are now to where you want to be or need to be in the, in the future. Yeah, there's a number of uh, challenges we face and what we are trying to do in a business is mitigate against uncertainty. So the uncertainties we face, um, top of the list at the moment, have to be weather because that's clearly um, you know, with us right now and it's clearly having a, an impact. Um, we had the drought in 2018, so we have, we've gone through two recent, uh, I suppose, more extreme weather events which have caused problems. Um, so mitigating for weather events uh, the sorts of things we can do, mixed farms can consider uh, whole crop as a way of mitigating for a forage shortfall, particularly in a drought year. Um, another mitigation would be moving young stock onto, say, straw-based diets in a period when, again, you're, you're short of, of, of feed. Unfortunately, both of these will add cost to the business. Um, it's really a, a choice of which is the, uh, the least expensive route to mitigating a problem. So weather's a big mitigation. There's another area of uncertainty is clearly milk price. You know, we have seen, uh, particularly 
in the last seven or eight years increased the volatility. So farms are having to deal with that. Either just are literally a, a price taker and have to you know, respond to whatever happens to price from day to day. But increasingly now we are seeing more fixed price contracts being offered. Uh, there's, there's several now actually out there. Um, Muller with Air fixed offer started last June, June 18. Um, more recently with Credit and Dairy and White Farms all coming out with uh, fixed, fixed price offers all around 28p a litre, which is an uh, uh, interesting point that they all have, have the same figure. Yeah, the benefits of choosing a, a fixed milk price uh, could be that you put in some stability into the forward price you receive for milk, so it enables you to plan uh, better. Uh, invariably the offers aren't for 100% fixed anyway, they're for a pr proportion of the milk, typically up to 50%. So it's a way of hedging future milk price. Uh, you won't necessarily get it right, uh, but it's certainly worth considering. And there's now evidence that some contracts have fixed price contracts are now delivering better prices than the uh, than the monthly uh, you know, price movements that we normally see from from a, from a milk buyer. Yeah, another key factor is mitigating uh, in, input cost volatility. Um, there's a number of key inputs that we're probably concerned about, the number one being uh, fees, because invariably that's the one which uh, is the biggest, sorry, it's the single biggest uh, cost of production, uh, around about nine pence a litre. So if we can mitigate volatility, it will help again with um, future budgeting and stability. Uh, and that can be done just through forward contracts, so whether that's for straights, and it is possible to fix forward um, dairy compound prices. So there are the, the, there are options. They can be uh, sort of examined and weighed up by looking at them. You're not necessarily mean you are going to fix, but at least you've examined them. You've drawn a conclusion, and that process in itself is is worthwhile, even if you don't fit, uh, fix. Another key a area of uh, d mitigation would be to do with uh, animal disease. Um, we have a number of sort of challenges in the dairy sector. Certainly, number one in the southwest where I work is uh, TB. Um, one, one of the mitigations we can or should consider is the um, number of home, home roof replacements. Uh, typically we expect replacement rate to be around about 25% uh, per annum, but really with TB, because of the uncertainty of um, you know, going down with TB and reactors, then probably now we have to anticipate we're at least 30%, maybe even 35% replacement rate. So we have scope for uh, replacing TB reactors. And if things go well, then there's the, obviously the, the option to, to sell surplus if the opportunity arises. One of the other diseases worthy of, um, again, consideration is Yoni's disease. It's a, a growing problem in the UK. Um, milk testing, routine milk testing is available, so we can now identify uh, high-risk uh, cows, so-called J4s, J5s, and to really take proactive action to um, start controlling Yoni's, because without control it becomes endemic in a herd. And now some milk buyers you know, are really looking for reductions in yonis and some now expecting on specialist contracts there to be no J4s and J5s uh, from, from uh, spring 20. Yeah, so the things you might consider in mitigating cash flow in the business are really principally so that you are in control of your future, uh, you remain in control of the business. Um, it's been some pretty challenging times over recent years and bank special measures is one that uh, should be avoided at all costs. And to do that you really have to understand your cash needs going forward. Uh, that has to be forward uh, budgeting. The key thing is to identify peak borrowing requirements. And then if you find that you're breaching uh, agreed overdraft limits in terms of uh, going forward, uh, what are the things you might consider? So sometimes it's delaying machinery replacement. Uh, can be um, moving from a loan repayment to a, an interest only basis mm -hmm. that frees up cash um, and things like postpone so HP agreements that come to an end you don't have to renew just because it's finished so it's looking at replacement period as well. Well it started off really by throwing out the challenge about the environmental concerns that you know now becoming obvious that we really have to address so engaging with all that means, and particularly now, we're going to have to focus on our own carbon footprint and, and to, to see where we have to make, make improvements because that's going to be the future of the, of the pressure we're, we're under. And leading on from that, it's really then about the efficiency of the, uh, the farm business and how we organise and manage the resources we have to really have maximum efficiency while protecting the environment that we're having to work within. Well, I think um, you know, a lot of it comes from 
attending meetings like like we have today, where there's you know, you're able to listen to uh, speakers, uh, pick out the points that are relevant to you, talk to other farms in a similar situation. Those are all key. But things that uh, you know are readily available are uh, farm bench, so you can start the process, and that will that will provide a, a whole host of uh, information. And from that, you have the opportunity to to share that information in discussion group formats, and that's a valuable way of um, of, of trying to. Yeah, explore, extract value out of uh, what, what you've learned.